So the rip yesterday, I was kind of scared by rain because as you can see, I'm surrounded by clouds here. So it started drizzling a little bit, so I kind of rush prepped, but got all this low pitch ice and watered. I've got all these valleys. There's seven valleys that go, this one's all the way up. A couple shorties, longer one. Foley, a couple short ones here. So there's seven valleys. And then that skylight. Uh, I'll see how far I get today. I'm gonna try and get for sure all this detail section done But for now, I'm gonna show you how to do These valleys because these all these valleys are a little bit different like these two valleys are the same But like this valley here You know, I've got to start down in here work my way up um, And then I kind of have to work across and then work my way up into the second valley See on the other side it's the same but opposite sides so I'll film that too. That way if you have valleys like this and you're shingling at home you know how to tackle them. You know you always have to start from the bottom up. In this scenario they've hot welded these <coughs> steps in so I'm going to recycle them. They match the trough anyway and then I'm just going to put little strips of ice and water over top of the nail heads just to you know keep everything sealed. There's nothing wrong with the metal it's fine. And it's hidden behind the trough, so otherwise, if it was visible, you'd have to change it. And then, yeah, these valleys again, a little different, a little different. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm gonna start. I got my shingles, my starters, I've got my drip, I've got my ice and water, my gun, I've got a palm nailer just in case I need it down in the short check section. I haven't really gone down there and looked at it, so I don't know yet. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm going to be. Hopefully I can get this done in the first clip and then, you know, get set up for the next one. But yeah, it's always annoying working in these tight spots. This one doesn't seem to be too bad because they've kind of stopped it right there. Um, but I'll get a pry bar in there, get any extra nails out so I can get my starter underneath there. And yeah, so I'll start there. Hopefully I don't forget anything. <clears throat> Can't forget these bad boys. Collapsible little landers are handy, but they're kind of sketchy sometimes. He's got a really nice garden in here, so hopefully I don't damage anything. But I really don't have a choice. I kind of have to get up in here, so. Uh, shit. Maybe I can reach from here. It's tricky working and stuff like this. Hopefully I can get up in here and not damage any of this. He's obviously been out watering. Everything has to be separated, that's why it looks like that. I can't just fire it all in the bin in British Columbia, which is obviously annoying, but it's the way she goes.
this one. I like the other one better, but this one will work. I really hate working out of people's gardens because you know they put lots of time and effort into them, so it's unfortunate when I have to go stomping through them. But especially retired people, you know, they have a little more free time, so they typically have these hobbies where they make everything look nice in their property. Uh, all right, I don't like working this like this on this angle here. I can already see that this is gonna be fun. Might just have to pull that fucking trough bolt out. other one because I can roll the I can roll the um, pry bar ah. get all this shit out of here years of dirt and debris See, this is just an uncomfortable position. Again, I don't want to damage a tree. So, kind of just do what you gotta do, right? Obviously, when this was shingled, none of this was here, so. Kind of have me at an advantage there. I guess my disadvantage. And that tells me there's another nail here. Uh, or not. Maybe I'm just a big fat liar. Uh, you know, lots of guys too will just come in and go over this stuff, but you're just gonna create problems for yourself. Take the time to get it all out. Okay, there's that nail. Uh, uh, yeah, see, normally I can twist the pry bar. That's why I like the skinnier one. I can twist it out. Probably these nails out, but... Alright. Get this shit out of here. Alright. Uh, there's like a treasure trove in there. See, what they did was they essentially just blocked out anything past. So, got metal coverage there. I've got a little nail down in here. Ah, come on, come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Ah, love doing things the hard way. All right, here we go. And we're cooking. Hey, okay. nice little got full metal coverage. Get this fucking dirt out of here. Oh, what do we got? Nice and clean in there. Well, they blocked off like the soffit underneath here, which is good because you can't really get in there and nail. Probably not what I would have done, but it's okay. So, now, now that I can't reach anything. Uh, all right, get our starter, get our drill. 
So, if you're doing your house, there's no point in not installing drip edge, honestly. The amount that it costs, for how much headache it'll save you. Because you want everything to land, right? Like, you want everything to be nice and tight. You see how that sits on that edge there? So, of course I can't reach anything now because the ladder's not where I want it. Don't die. Oh, my coffee spilled. Right, trying to get everything within reach now. Well, I probably don't even need that. in reach. Alright, here we go. Here we go. You know, if you're nailing too, anytime you nail anywhere near steps or anything, you know you want to keep it as minimal as possible. This it's just extra preventative measure, right? If you don't need to put a nail in, then don't. You always land your step on your starter, okay? So metal under the metal, then starter under the first piece, okay? And then your shingle will cover that. You always need to have a shingle under your starting piece of drip, or um, flashing. Sorry, my brain's not working yet. So this always, metal always lands on this, okay? Don't be difficult. So I'll get this up in there. And then I'll set my set my nice little overhang here. Got a nice little finger. Of course there's cables here, which again, just, just really just here to make me mad. Um, I'll just certain teeth starters nailed. within four inches, I believe, of Eve, or three, somewhere in there. Like that. You can always check your keyways here too, like, you see how tight this is? It doesn't always work that way. Okay, those are the first two pieces. Okay, you need to metal first, this under this, okay? So these, nailing these, getting in here and nailing them is not as important as you think. These are nailed to the fascia and screwed with the trough. They're not going anywhere. So I won't worry about tarring these or uh, covering these holes because um, these shingles are going to seal in here once they heat up. And I'm not going to put any more holes in it because there's no point. Doing things twice for no reason. You could see when I was ripping it out how tight everything was in here, so I'm not gonna be worried too worried about that. Now, essentially, you know, you want to make sure that's tight, okay? Tight up to your metal. Tight up to your metal, okay? That's shingle one. See, this is good. You want to make sure that this is sitting above this, so it's it's not past your reveal here. So again, don't nail right close. Give it a little bit of space. There's no point because, like I said, once those shingles seal, I mean, wind is not gonna be able to get up and pull up this trough and you shingle, like it's just complete lunacy. These cuts inside. So I flip my shingle over, make my cut. And then my cuts go in. And I put on a little bit of bias because they typically like to run up. So, back here. Okay, We're tight on the inside. We're square here. Okay, these are those fucking stupid shingles. You see the bits a little bit short here? So you gotta be careful when you're shingling because sometimes that happens. And it's kind of, you know, one of my pet peeves, but again. 
it's just a manufacturing thing and, and it's mostly cosmetic so if it was really bad and really noticeable then I would change or not use it but I'm not gonna start turf and shingles just because of that Do, do, do. All right, so now we've got our steps again. See, the step covered, shingles are tight against the metal. Okay, now we want to take 12 inches off. Okay, each step is six inches, approximately. It's not a perfect science when you're eyeballing it, but. Oh, you fucker. So, in this instance, you want to make sure this is tight in here. Okay, I'll reuse the same holes. Okay. I'll add one here. So. You know, in these sections, if you're doing this at home, you know, take your time. This is not, you know, this is not a marathon. This is, or I mean, this is not a sprint. Sorry, I'm, I'm still waking up, I guess. I'm still awake. Okay. Make sure those are sitting nice. You see, there's a little gap here, which I don't particularly like, so that means the shingles are running away. So I'm gonna trim this the other way, so I can get it in there tight. Okay. See, that's better. You know, the metal's there, so it's not a huge deal, but again, I'm kind of a stickler for that stuff. give it a little bit more structure and strength in this we're gonna want to do here okay now we're at this edge okay but remember you have to work both of these at the same time so ah, this is such an awkward position what I'm gonna do here let's get a little piece of tar paper or uh, ice and water sorry uh, So So we'll tuck a little piece up under here. Remember water flows down, so kinda gotta make sure. You want coverage, right? Like you want coverage over the metal here on the joint of the valley, see? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So that way when this metal comes down, it lands on here, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. This is all gonna seal up so so tight anyway, so it's really okay. Let's get this kind of flat. here. You don't need to nail the shit out of it. It's just... Okay. Cut another little piece from here.
and get this under. Our lines are lining up. Okay. So, I have to trim this back a touch. Otherwise, oh, you're annoying. Okay, so normally I'd put a full piece in, but for this video, I'm just gonna trim the drip to show you how I land this valley. Okay, so ballpark here. out of the way so because I have my shingle here and my coffee what I want to do is to get this to fit as tight as possible so take my point and then I'll give it a little trim because I want that to sit as nicely as I can and tighten that pocket there. I'll probably even get one more up, one more shingle up, because I'm gonna open these valleys. So, I know it's to this point. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just to give you an idea. that thing around for no reason. Okay. Oh, that's fucking true. All right. So, what we got here is, oh, these wires are gonna be the bane of my existence. So I need to nip this a little bit more in the front. Okay. Ah, that's what we're talking about there. So now when this valley comes down, it lands on this drip edge, right? Which lands on ah, the flashing. So if you have your wall flashing, Underneath, what you want, right? So you got flashing, flashing, flashing. Shingle, metal on top of shingle, and then valley on top of shingle. I'll probably put another shingle in under because then when I, you'll see, but then when I run my first course off this valley metal, it, there won't be any exposed blue. So, so again, I don't typically, I mean, if you can, Try and nail up, just so it's not sitting right on the edge. I mean, it won't. It's all gonna get covered with metal because I'll run my valley past. So these are all nice and tight. Now, oh yeah. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. This shingle, because this one's going. Get out of here. So for this shingle, you see the coverage here now? 
so. So this coverage, this little drop here is fine because there's metal. Remember that metal goes under, there's ice and water. So what you wanna do, get your shingle in here tight. Probably trim that shingle after just because there's so much excess. But get my run straight. Okay. Now when I run, I'm gonna try and get this fucking thing. Oh, that's fine. I'll leave it like that. So you want it tight in here, right? Hey. Okay. Now. Now this section here. This, I mean, I could have trimmed this up, but it's black. I don't really, I don't really care, being honest. So now you have this, this, this. Probably should have run my starter under that, but. Now, we're gonna continue the same process of, okay, we want coverage on coverage on coverage, okay? If you follow all of these steps, you will have watertight valleys, okay? Now this overhang, when this valley metal runs down, it's gonna be out here, so the valley's gonna launch this water kind of into the trough area. Down onto the metal, it's covered by all of this metal, the shingles, these two, so there's coverage everywhere. Uh, try and get this little. Okay. All right, I'm not gonna bother nailing in that section. I don't think so anyway. I'm gonna put one in there. Okay, so that's what you're gonna see. Okay. So I could technically land this valley now. And I do, I have to land this valley, get this valley set. And then, because it's lower than this one, everything lower has to happen before the higher stuff. So I'm gonna land this valley now. And then I'll work my shingles into it. I'll have to chalk lines and then I'll work my shingles into it up into here. And then I'll set, have to land this valley on top of my shingles here. So this is the process of how things have to happen. There's these different steps up. So I'll grab some metal. Piece that the guys didn't scratch there when they were delivering it. Because it's right in the fucking front. Oh, that's another thing. If you've got scratch metal, you know, put it facing the, the bush or... So, I'll run my valleys long. You see? I want to run my valleys long, and then I want to trim them back. Okay? I want full metal coverage on the bottoms of my valleys. This one's going to be probably be a little tricky. Ah. Uh, And there's two extremely different, two extremely different uh, profiles here. So it's kind of annoying, I guess you could say. So you see, this one's like flat and this one's like, yeah, so it's gonna be, I'm gonna have fun basically is what I'm trying to say. I won't set these home. Kinda wanna get a good gauge of where I'm sitting. underneath okay so we have an idea our valley's gonna go straight up there all right and underneath we want this point to match this point where you set you see where you set this area here this is where you valley end okay you want to get that tight in there okay So 
now that we got that set, you don't want to nail low because you're still working in that area. So what you do, come up here. Now you know. The valley doesn't feel it's so weird. Let me try. Yeah, this valley is gonna be a fucking little bit of bitch. So you kind of have to force it down when you have these extreme angles. And you might have to nail a little lower than you would like to. But that's just the way it goes. See, I'm keeping constant pressure. Try and keep the center tight on the valley. There, so that's just, you know, See, it's a little bulgy, but that, there's really nothing I can do because it's such a, an extreme. This is like a 212, and that's like a 612. So now that I got that. Where's my hammer? I mean, this is probably overkill, but I like to roll the paper into the valley. All oh, these fucking things. Just... this yet but the valleys you see this valley goes this way and then it comes and then changes direction so that's you know that's always fun but I got to keep as much of this metal on so when I lap it it's it's got some uh, something to connect to I don't want to bend it so get out of there oh what I'm gonna do is just take a little trim. Let's see where I'm at here. That should be okay. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see what's going on. So these obviously need to line up, these two points here. So I get it as tight as I can. Only set one side. Do not set both sides or you are gonna be mad. Don't hit your hand with a hammer either. Hurts. 